I'm the Vacuuminator. I'm Buster. And this week in Toku, we're going to be discussing a fellow YouTuber, tons more turtle and toy news, and some high school nostalgia. But Dang. before all that, uh, Buster, how's your week been? Uh, well, for, first off, I I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to do this episode because of tornado warning. Uh, it's calmed down, so, you know, we can do it. But also, yeah. you know, it's been an okay week. Uh, made three videos on that week. The cartoon discussion sucks video. Like, I, like one that blew up the one villainous scene on Vengex uh, from RPM, uh, Power Rangers. Yeah. And the, the making, <laughs> making, speaking of talking about fellow YouTubers, I made a video on Shafrellis, so. <laughs> yeah, you were just bussing it this week. It's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, it's like two minute stuff, but hey, you know that's my shit. The short, concise, like, like I'm I'm the snack provider of YouTubers. <laughs> you're the uh, you're the corn chip. Yeah, I'm the corn chip of YouTubers. <laughs> you should put that like on, you should put that on your banner. <laughs> nah, maybe, maybe later. Maybe later. Maybe. How have you been doing? Um, I've been okay. Uh, it's it's honestly been a really hectic one because um. Uh, my sister uh, had her kid this week, so I've been doing a lot of driving around and helping out the the family with various things and having to constantly shift my schedule around. Um, it settled down quite a bit the last two days, but uh, for, for a little while going there, it was very much like even less sleep than usual, kind of running around, busting my ass and barely keeping up with things, but... Uh, we managed to make it through somehow, so, you know, that's all well and good. And you know what else is well and good? People supporting this podcast in modular media. So, yeah. uh, every, everybody, if you're listening to this, go ahead and give it a follow on whatever platform you're on to get future episodes as they're released. If you're listening to us on YouTube, please give us a like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell in order to enable future notifications and get every modular media podcast as it's released. Follow us on Twitter to get all the updates and stuff that's at the modular media and join the subreddit for basically the same thing. That's r slash modular media. And, you know, just genuinely help us out in all those various algorithms and things because uh, it'll help the podcast succeed in the future. But uh, somebody who really doesn't need help succeeding in the future because he's got a well-established following at this point Uh your boy, uh, Louis Lovehog Linkara, put out a new history of Power Rangers this week on Power Rangers Beast Morphers. And uh, I, I wanted to put this into housekeeping just basically to give my annual PSA of, uh, hey, Linkara is not the be-all, end-all of Power Rangers opinions. Like, I have a lot of respect for the guy, but don't just watch that video and then make his opinions on Beast Morphers your opinions. Like, judge for yourself, everybody. Yeah, like me, who really doesn't like Beast Morphers season two. <laughs> yeah, uh, I had that's a, that's. A, I had I a feeling you were disagreeing with a lot of that video. Yeah, I mean, it was really the second half I mostly disagreed with. Like the, the video was fine, a bit, t a bit nitpicky for my liking. But, you know, it's fine. Mm -hmm. He talks about some odd things, um, and also picks up on stuff that, uh, like I appreciated. Like I, I. I honestly was really gra glad he was getting annoyed with how late in the episodes the opening comes, because that oh, was yeah. bothering me, too, when I watched I it. I should have mentioned that. I should have mentioned that, because that, that's some weird editing. Yeah. Uh, um, I did find it funny that just because it's the beginning of the Hasbro era, he felt the need to comment on the toys for once. Yeah. Especially I mean, like, because all he said was, I hear the Lightning Collection is good. I don't really care about action figures, though. Yeah, I, I, from, like, his videos, AC's more of a Morpher guy, so, you know, make some Morpher size, bro, if you want that Lewis Love Hog money. <laughs> the, that that would be a great title for, for, like, a dumb video or something, that Lewis Love Hog mo money. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but, uh, yeah. It's an okay uh, video. Could for have those of you who but... haven't checked it out, uh, I mean, you don't really need us to tell you to go and watch it. it, it watch I thought my it was... one instead. <laughs> Watch, watch my one. Oh wait, it's unlisted. But you can no, find it in not. a playlist. Oh, oh, oh yeah, you did one. Oh yeah, I completely yeah. forgot that. I, that because eh, never mind. I'm, I'm being too egotistical that I forget that other people have made Beast Morphers videos besides me. <laughs> Linkara. Yeah, I had to remind you about this before we started recording, didn't I? Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, 
But uh, but no, I I have a lot of respect for Linkara, and it's basically an event in the fandom when a new history of Power Rangers comes out. So I figured we'd talk about it for a few minutes because hey, one of the things that got me interested in Power Rangers as an adult or like a late game teenager and interested in Tokusatsu in general was History of Power Rangers. I did I found Linkara when he released History of Power Rangers on Wild Force the first time. Yeah, oh, that, that must have been a weird experience because of the whole, like, uh, History of Power Rangers rant at the beginning, like, of the, mm-hmm. when's the next one? Uh, yeah. I kind of discovered him through, like, a, like these YouTube re-uploads, like, before he made a permanent jump to YouTube, someone just re-uploaded the random, like, bits of his videos, like, like Mystic Force, and, like, I think that was the first one I watched. I just bought, I, I think they were, like, the first quote-unquote reviews I've seen next to some call me Johnny. I don't know. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move on, though, uh, yeah. and get, get on to the news. Yeah, get on to the news here, and uh, following up on what we talked about last week at the uh, at the top, we have, again, at the top, a bunch of Lightning Collection news, because uh, we've gotten the entire rest of the uh, Power Rangers X Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Lightning Collection subline revealed. Um, it's two more uh, multi-packs and a deluxe figure, and we're, we're going to go through these one at a time, because we already talked about um, the, uh, what was it? Uh, Do- uh, Leo Donatel- and Donnie. Yeah, Leo and Donnie, they were a two-pack, and uh, the second two-pack that was revealed the, uh, the day after we recorded last week, because it was basically daily reveals, and then at the end of the week, they did a fan first Friday to kind of give you some behind-the-scenes on the figures, um, is uh, a two-pack of morphed Michelangelo and morphed April O'Neil, uh, which... Like as like just to like spoil something a bit. At the more the slide progressed, there was just more highs and lows. <laughs> like yeah, because this is uh, I think Living Ranger Key said this is the seventh use of the Pink Ranger mold. Yeah, and like this is just this one doesn't have a skirt. And I'm like, hey, it's good to see April gets a mold. Well, why can't we just get regular old April? <laughs> I well, I think it's because they want to give you the whole team because April does become a ranger in the comic. Yeah. So, like, from that perspective, I'm fine with it, but, like, it's basically a bunch of stuff we have be- we've already gotten, and I think aside from the uh, the weapons and the uh, new, the two new head sculpts, uh, Mikey is entirely reused from one of the other turtles, and um, I-, I gotta admit, uh, not feeling that April O'Neil civilian head, it, it doesn't yeah. look... Great the Mikey one's pretty funny. It, it captures his like kind of comedic tendencies as well. Especially love the promo picture where he has like Mikey holding his helmet. That was, that's funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I do like though that they fought to throw in with uh, April a a microphone and a video and like a, a TV station video camera. That's a that's a very fun thing to throw in. It's just a it's characterful for April, but in the grand scheme of lightning collection and action figures in general, it's kind of a random accessory Yeah, that almost makes me want to pick up this two-pack specifically so I can use those for future figure photography. And then we get to the most hot and cold two-pack of the bunch. Yeah, the one that made, uh, like, I, I saw you getting a little let down by the, the one we just finished talking about, but this one seemed to tick everybody off, and I, I was very much like... Yo, I understand why everybody's mad. I kind of agree, but also I see what Hasbro's doing here because the third and final two pack is morphed Raphael and Foot Soldier Tommy. Uh, Raphael. The worst part is Raphael looks so cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and again, it's a lot of reuse from the other turtles with a new with two new heads and a a couple new accessories for. Raph, but the Red Ranger colors look really good on this mold. Yeah, like, um, it's probably the like one of the like the my favorite of the turtle designs that they also. Made. It's the uh, it's the only civilian turtle head that's doing turtle face. Angry, like just being angry, like oh oh yeah, like the original like night the comic one was like the yeah, like, and and, the, and a lot of the toys do that as well. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a, that's a cute detail. I mean, it kind of makes sense for Raph, given he's the angry one usually. Mm-hmm. And like um, I, I like foot soldiers are cool. I like the, the their designs in Ninja Turtles, but it's like I haven't read the comic, so I don't know how pivotal Tommy disguise because I'm assuming he disguises himself yeah. as a foot soldier. I don't know how pivotal a plot point that is, but I look at this and I go, really? You give us 
Tommy in disguise over like is Casey Jones in the comic? Because I feel Apparently. like people... Okay, why the heck didn't we get Casey Jones? Because other I, I, I haven't read the comic either, so I, I could be completely wrong. But like the, the originally, I thought they were gonna bundle Raphael with Shredder, and I'm like, that would have been a great thing. You have the turtles. You have one of the turtles, one of the most popular turtles, versus their greatest enemy. Mm-hmm. Easy sell. Well, I knew uh, because we had the listings leaked like last year. I think oh. um, we we knew. Sh- we knew Shredder was going to be sold separately, but I also figured, like, I, again, I figured this multi-pack would be Raph and Casey, because they're almost always buds in Turtle continuities, from what I know. Um, and, like, the thing is, well, I'm not the fan, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of getting another Tommy, I do see what Hasbro is doing here, because they're doing the exact same thing they did for the first Lightning Collection 2-pack. Do you remember what that was? Explain. Fighting Spirit, Green Ranger, and Putty. That was the first release of the Putties because they knew everybody would want to army build Putty, so they put them in a 2-pack to move a bunch of Green Ranger figures as well. Um, And I can see them thinking that way here. It's that that corporate toy company mentality of... Everybody's going to want, a, uh, like, a handful of foot soldiers to fight their turtles, so they're going to buy a bunch of Raphaels as well. And, like, that's cynical, and that's scummy, but also I get it, and, like... Like, I don't like them doing a foot soldier. I just don't <laughs> like the idea that it's Tommy as the foot soldier, because that just yeah. kind of... It kind of enforces their mentality that, like, oh, only Tommy will sell. Well, of course only Tommy will sell. That's all... That's half of the figures you've given us. Yeah. Um... And also, like, if I can be if I can be nice about this two pack for a split sure. second, I will say, as somebody who isn't into turtles but tends to see all the turtle news go across his timeline, this is probably the best foot soldier figure I've ever seen. I really like the design of this thing. Yeah, um, again, like the foot soldier part is cool. I just don't like the idea of it being Tommy. Yeah, like again, I haven't read the comic, so I don't know how accurate this would be, but. If you literally just changed the Tommy head to a Casey Jones head, I would be perfectly fine with it yeah, because then same. you get the entire Turtles cast. Yeah, like the important people, because Casey Jones is a big part of Turtles lore. Mm-hmm. Like even if it's just Casey Jones, like the hockey mask one, you, you could have easy. Yeah. So a- as is, this is kind of this is kind of like the weirdest one out of them to me. Like all the others, it's like yeah, that makes sense. This one, it's like wow. The one Power Rangers character in this line, and it's Tommy, of course. Yeah. Uh, but then we have probably the, the coolest figure in the whole line, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, morphed Shredder. Shredder as the Green Ranger looks fucking boss. And this basically just reinforces my point that there's so that like every MMPR Green that isn't Tommy is the coolest. Mm-hmm. Uh, I. Man, I really love the metallic gold they used on this figure, and apparently it's going to have a wired cloth cape. First time Hasbro's done that with any of their lines that I can think of. So, like, like, Like Hasbro will occasionally do cloth capes for figures, but they've never done a wired one that you can actually pose. It's it's always like a label tape. So, this is potentially a huge leap forward in figure technology for Hasbro, which is really exciting. Yeah, um, it's one of, one of the coolest f- crossover figures they've done. And this, mm-hmm. this actually makes up the 99th Lightning figure. Yeah, What's so the next... We, we don't know. I was expecting that to be revealed today, but oddly enough, we didn't get any Lightning Collection reveals today, even though we are still in Power Month, as they're calling Maybe it. Maybe they're just saving everything for Fan First Friday because they realize... Wait a minute. We just revealed everything like throughout the week, and then we just did a pointless fan first Friday. Maybe, but Hasbro's doing a pow- Hasbro's doing a Transformers fan first Friday this week. So, oh, maybe, they, okay. oh. maybe we'll get a fan first Thursday this week or something yeah. like that. But I feel like they would have already announced that. I don't know. Again, also, it might be that by the time this podcast comes out, they've already announced Figure One Hundred. So, yeah. Uh, but as is. Um, well, I am irked by the Tommy inclusion. I do think overall this subline looks really cool. And uh, if I was into Turtles, I'd probably get it. As is, it's it's more like, man, I kind of want hands on with that shredder, but uh, I don't want to own it. Yeah, um, I, I might pick up the shredder. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and speaking of things I don't want to own, uh, <laughs> SH Monster Arts has announced that they are going to be doing a special colors uh, re-release of their Godzilla King of the Monsters, King Ghidorah, uh, which basically means it's going to be the same figure, but with shiny gold paint this time. I don't care for King of the Monsters. I mean, this is a cool figure, but now um... uh, I've actually watched a couple reviews of this figure, and it it's it's really not that great. So, mm. like, you could not convince me to buy even the regular version of this figure, let alone a if I can translate the price real quick, a two hundred dollar version of it with gold, yeah. with shiny paint. No, fuck that. I'm not getting this thing. Yeah, speaking uh, but, of things that you might want to get if you're an Ultraman fan. Yeah, this does actually look pretty cool, because to my... Well, I know they did one for the original Ultraman transformation device, but to my knowledge, this is the first time they've done a modern um, kind of... New like, generation. Yeah, because yeah. like, uh, Ultraman Orb is getting an Ultra Replica Orb Ring, basically... Uh, orb CSM ring. Orb Ring. Yeah, basically that. And it's going to include BGMs, got to get, like, some new cards from Series After Orb. Um, you know, it looks cool. It's more... There will be active. lines from the actor. Yeah, and it's going to be pretty cool. I'm, I don't, I'm, I need to watch Orb. If I think I've watched Orb, like, I need to finish, I need to finish Orb. As someone who needs, still needs to finish Orb, I'm still considering getting this. Especially because it includes other cards from Geed, Rube, Taiga, Zet, and Trigger. Yeah, it looks super awesome, and in my opinion, is one of the few, like, CSM-type releases I've seen that totally justifies its price tag, which is $150. That's um, actually a good price, because getting all those cards, and, like, you get the orb ring, and... And, and again, all that, all that actor dialogue and built-in music. Like, yeah, I'd definitely say if you're an orb fan, you should probably pick this up, even if you already have a, a regular orb ring. Yeah, um, I'm I'm more excited for next year when they eventually do the Jeed Riser. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's gonna be cool. Uh, the first one, if if I ever get any of these, the first one I'll probably fall for is when they do Zed. Yeah, that's gonna uh, be that's gonna be quite a like four years because like the, this year's Orb's fifth anniversary, so mm -hmm. it seems like every five years they're gonna do. Something. Well, that's fine. Gives me time to save up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, something I don't think anybody is gonna want to save up for, honestly, is that uh. uh there's going to be Ultraman and Kamen Rider themed Vitality bracelets in celebration of the franchise's two anniversaries these year, uh, this year. Um, what company is this by? Uh, uh, Bandai. This, oh, this is just a straight up Bandai release. Yeah, because here's is... the thing: Bandai does Digimon toys, and this is something like slightly Digimon related. Yeah, this basically looks like this looks like a freaking. Ultraman and Common Rider themed smartwatches. Yeah, basically. And there's like evolutions, your things can change, and like mm -hmm. there'll be different cards for different characters. You can get like an Ichigo card and a Kuga card. And apparently, you, know. you can have them battle because the memory co cards are called VS memories. Yeah, because yeah, they I, they will be able. They're basically Digimon. Like uh, my my uh, good buddy Con Ex, he he's made he's making some videos about it, and like like so yeah, check those out. Yeah, and I mean, like, these look cool, but I, I could not see myself owning one, just because, like, this this is, like, one of those super nerdy things that I would only be comfortable messing around with at, in, like, a con environment. Yeah, but also, like, it seems like, you know, this is mostly, a ju like, you know, the smartwatch is a Japan thing, so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I see people with like Apple watches every once in a while around here, but it's not. I know, like a I'm super talking about like the, the 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 design, the 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 brand of smartwatch. I'm talking. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, those exist if you want them, but like it's probably going to be ridiculous import tax. And speaking of ridiculous import tax, uh, the next CSM project has been announced, and it's going to be a 50th anniversary memorial set of the original. Common Rider Typhoon Driver. Um, yeah. It looks fucking beautiful. It really does. Because this is a fully, this is going to be a fully featured electronic belt with uh, motion sensor technology. It has all the little details and whatnot. The actual belt is a leather strap made of cowhide. Um, it's going to come with a replica of Common Rider 1's scarf. You'll be able to, uh, change it from a common rider one to a common rider two mold 
there's going to be a Rider Club pendant included and a stand with swappable side plates to have it represent either Rider 1 or Rider 2. And uh, yeah, this looks like about as possibly nice of a toy of you could make of the original driver. Um, yeah. Look very nice. Um, I'm personally like I like I'm gonna wait till they make a stronger CSM if I'm like considering. Yeah, and like this is definitely for diehard rider fans because it is going to be a five hundred dollar release. Yeah, and but I heard there's also gonna be like a cheaper like you know just like a DX release they're making. Uh, uh that's a re-release of a slightly older version of the Typhoon that's uh, yeah. being released fr- through Club Rider. I think like in the next month is when they're putting. Yeah, that, that's out. Um, that's what I was referring to. I know, I know it doesn't have all the nice things, but like you know, if you if you want a Rider One prop, then here. Yeah, that's that's perfectly serviceable. This is like for people who are super obsessed with Rider One, and I mean. I, I've seen most of the original series. I love the original series, but five hundred dollars for a, a driver is a tough sell for me. Um, that being said, though, we do have a new interview with uh, Hiroshi Fukujita that came along with the announcement of this driver. Uh, basically, just him pimping the thing and talking about memories of filming the show and how the henshin was uh, created, and also the joy of when he first started seeing kids running around with henshin belts in the seventies. Yeah, uh, awesome yeah. stuff. Would recommend a read. Yeah, I, I read through this this morning. It's it's very charming. Uh, Fukujita is just a charming man, honestly. Yeah. So. Uh, I always recommend whenever new interviews with him come out that people take a look at those. Um, And then we have an announcement of something that me and some of my friends have been saying Toei should just do for years um, or something like this for years. The Kamen Rider Transformation Sound Card Selection, which is basically Kamen Rider belts on your phone with microtransactions. Ah, yeah, like it, it, just like there's a like, comrade belts on my phone. Oh, like those flash belts, like I found on DeviantArt that can't work anymore because Flash is dead. And now it's like microtransactions, just like, yeah, it's basically what it is. It's basically you buy a card and they're like 10 or 15 bucks each, I think. And you scan them into an app on your phone and then you can access certain features of that driver from the show. Um, and also, it should oh, be noted... Do- the, the cards are just $2 each. Oh, that's way cheaper, but but still, that's microtransactions. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it should be um, clarified, this will probably only work on Japanese phones. Yeah, it seems like it. Um, and, like, this is a really cool concept, but, like, this is also a harbinger of things to come, I feel like, because, as I was saying... A long time ago, some friends of mine and I joked that one day Toei is going to release a driver that's just a plastic belt that you put a smartphone into and all the forms are microtransactions. That's going to be the next game-themed rider, I feel, if they ever go back to, like, the gaming theme. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this, this is just a cool idea and a cool concept for somebody who doesn't have the money or the space for a driver collection and lives in Japan. So I think it's it's cool that Toei's doing it, but it's definitely not something I'm gonna go for. Yeah, although like if I can complain about the the box, the cards themselves, like the little poster things. So some of them have their final forms, and some of them are just have their base forms. What's with that? It's I wonder like, if it's like you have to buy the base form and the final form separately. Oh, I mean, because it just seems like oh wait. Oh, wait, these are sounds. These are specific sounds. Like, this is, like, the mm-hmm. Zero-Two sound. This is the uh, Grand Geo sound. This is, like, the Rabbit Tank sound. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And that's probably why they're $2 each. Um, yeah. So, like, they can do waves of these. And, like, y- y- yeah, it's $2 for a card. But if you want to get every card for your favorite rider, it's probably going to be upwards into, like, $40. Yeah. Which is cheaper than a belt, but still. <laughs> mm uh, and then um, we have uh, finally for Rider News this week an announcement of uh, something that Toei just seems to do every year for all of their shows. We're getting chibi plushes of Common Rider Revi and Common Rider Vice, which look very similar to chibi plushes of Toei characters we've gotten in the past. Yeah, these uh, seem like a like a, no a mandatory part. I actually got uh, an O's and Build plushie like jer- like at a con once. So. Oh, that's cool. 
Yeah, um, no, like in a similar style of this. I've always wanted to pick up one of these, but it's it's just like it, it it's never available and a character I'm into at the same time. Because these drop and then they sell out fast, and then the only place you can find them is cons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also the, we got some de- we actually got some extra details because apparently on their feet Revy has two fives and Vice has two zeros, so the 50th anniversary kick makes sense. Yeah, That's I think cute. that was uh wasn't that in the trailer? It, we got, we knew it was gonna be a fifty, but we didn't know what their feet actually actually had fives and zeros on. Oh, okay, okay. Also, we see like Vice has like uh, on his feet a little dinosaur like like. Imprints. So. Yeah, he's got like a little. He's got a little, little toesy claws. That's yeah. adorable. Um, yeah. These are probably like the best toy plushies I've seen. They're both funny and like really detailed. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, finally and finestly for news this week. Oh my god. Uh, Disco Tech noted uh anime licensor in the West. Uh, went also on a ju- 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 Yeah, they they went on a tear announcing a bunch of releases. Uh, in in conjunction with Otakon happening this weekend, uh, this past weekend, and uh, as a bit of a surprise to everyone, they did a specific segment on their Tokusatsu releases, basically saying, "Hey, Starfleet, Just Beyond, and Galactic Wars have all sold super well for us, so we're going to be continuing on with Tokusatsu releases." And the next thing we're releasing is Cutie Honey the Live. Yeah. The fucking Hideaki Anno comedy no, wait, romance. Okay. Perf everyone, show. everyone thinks that it's Hide- Hideaki Anno did not do the live. He did the 2004 movie that was live action. He did not do the live. Okay. I, I'm gonna Google who actually did the live. I feel like it's a Sakamoto joint. Okay, but yeah, they're they're releasing um all. You're 20- actually the second person who messed that up today. <laughs> Sorry, it's fine. Uh, they're releasing all 26 episodes. It'll be a Blu-ray release. There will be Japanese and English subtitles, a bunch of behind-the-scenes features, apparently, which is really cool. You don't often see that with Western physical releases of Toku. Yeah. Um, other extras that they're not disclosing yet, so I'm guessing like maybe new cast and crew interviews. Um yeah. And it will be arriving late this year or, or early 2022. They don't have a specific release date nailed down yet. But Okay, uh, uh, guess who wrote the series? Who? In a way. Of course, in a way, wrote yeah. this. Uh, I, but no, really I'm cool. actually, I'm really excited about this. Because this is one of those, like, offshoot toku things I've always known about, but have never actually looked into. Yeah, so, I know TV Nihon subbed it, apparently. I don't know, like, mm-hmm. I could be wrong. And back like, when I used to went back when I used to watch Toku uh, via KRDL, if anybody remembers that site, I don't even know still if it's up. still up. It is still up. That's cool. Yeah. Um, but I used to always see that as one of the drop down tabs, and I was like, "What the heck is that?" I'll check that out someday when I've watched all of Rider. And here I am, still having not watched all of Rider. I mean, to be fair, half of it you're just like, just like you're Sundere for. Like, I don't want to watch Saber. Mm-hmm. I don't want to watch Saber. I don't want to watch Kiva. Uh. Yeah, uh, but yeah no, this, it's, this is a really cool. Yeah, it's it's a nice kind of like curveball announcement this week, which I was really really floored by for a few minutes there. Yeah, it, it's kind of like uh, something we kind of needed after the week we had for like just the dry spell of where is everything we were mm-hmm. promised things, but like. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, Disco Tech just be like, oh, hi, Toku, yeah, Kitty Honey the Live, boom, mic drop. Also, also freaking Gunbuster getting a new Western release? I'm oh, hyped yeah. over that, because I love Gunbuster. I need, I need to check that out. Maybe I'll probably check the uh, purchase the release or something. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that is it for news this week. So, Buster, why don't you take us on to new releases with the first episode of a new show that kind of caught both of us off guard? Yeah. The High School Heroes, Episode 1, The Birth of the Crimson Hero, The Blue Spring of Youth Strikes, Reversal Home Run. Uh, this, so basically for those who don't know, this is basically, um, Akiba Ranger 2.0. Yeah, Toei is in ju- in conjunction with a J-Drama station. They are making this series to celebrate Sentai's 45th anniversary. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, um, uh... Basically, the plot is a kid who has a school club about um, 
specifically Go Ranger, not yeah. Sentai, just specifically Go Ranger is what this kid's into. Um, he remembers being attacked by a monster when he was a kid near the high school. And so, like, he's trying to save his club and also find out what's up with the monsters by forming his own team of rangers. And this first episode is kind of him starting to do that. And it's this, I, I, the, like, this might be the best episode we've watched this week. <laughs> yeah, this was really good. Honestly, like, this is kind of what I wanted from Gandine. Yeah, like, I, I kind of feel like th there's this overwhelming passion for Tokusatsu in this. There's, so even Go Ranger specifically, you can still feel that, like, it still applies to general Toku. Like, if it was, like, if this was just a common writer thing, like, it would still, like, apply. Like, it just, yeah, just... Like, I yeah. love this main character. Like, he's a bit of a doof, but not in that, like, classic Toei Red Ranger way. More on just, like, an, an earnest love for yeah. heroes. I way. legit, like, like he, this This probably, like, oh my, I, I'm sorry, just, I'm going to be stuttering a lot because I have a lot, just so much positive emotion. This is, like, this, this protagonist, I forgot his name. What was his name? Um, uh, oh, God, I don't remember. I watched this this morning. I watched. Um, I just watched it recently, but like, I, oh, whatever. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just call him Red. It's like the Red guy. Like he's just like I kind of reminds me of me. <laughs> Sorry to be that guy, but like kind of me just being like, yeah, like Toku is cool, and it's like and he actually has an emotional connection with his dad, which yeah, it's a cliche, but it's a really well done one in this mm -hmm. in this episode. I love the scene of his dad like. Tell, oh, talking to him about the heroes. Yeah, all the flashbacks are in four by three. That's so good. Oh, uh, main character is uh, Tessai. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tessai. So yeah, Tessai is. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tessai, that's the character's name. Uh, what I was gonna say, I completely forgot. Um, and then uh, and then I like how he he like wins people over, and we we already have the whole team established too, which is really nice. We've only yeah, got one like, of them as a ranger. But we've got them all established, so we know yeah, how the like, show is going to play out. It, it kind of reminds me of this idea. Like, honestly, sorry, I'm not saying this show ripped me off, but it kind of had this. Uh, I it reminds me of this idea I had for like a common writer called Common Writer Paint or something, where it's like each like e or like where it's like there's this high school and like each of the like the main characters it has like an art a skill like that's mm -hmm. in a club or something. Yeah, they're like, all in different clubs. Which again, this is. This is in celebration of Sentai's anniversary, and yet this feels like a really good modern take on the MMPR concept. Oh my god, it really does. Like, you got a dance, you got sports, you got baseball. Mm -hmm. You got, yeah, uh, you got just, uh, one, one of the, the Pink Rangers, a reporter? Oh no, uh, actually, there's a, that's just a reporter. There's a different Pink Ranger, because actually the Pink Ranger is male. Oh yeah, that's right. All the, all the Rangers are male. Um, yeah. And, uh, Frickin' frickin' frackin' uh how, how good is... was their version of baseball mask? Oh that, that was that was a really good update. That was like one of the first things we saw. That was the... like something out of like uh Common Rider Amazon's frickin' slobbering everywhere. Yeah, just the, the teeth, the it, it it feels like it like it kind of reminds me of like a halfway, like if I have to describe this show, it has the design philosophy of Amazon's with the tone of a keyboard ring. Mm-hmm. And like that that's the other fit. Like I would say, Amazon's design philosophy for the monsters, the ranger suits remind me of Common Rider the first. Oh, definitely, I can see that. Yeah. Um, also, but, I love the I love the how the gimmick. Like we were just joking about this earlier. The gimmick is phones. Like yeah, they just an have app an app and they, they use to transform. <laughs> yeah, and like I, honestly, I love a real app like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that would be great. I download that app. Um, yeah. And also or even just, just like a like a CSM, just like a phone that has the app or something. Yeah, the app is the one screen. It's one of those phone toys where there's just one screen. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, I, I love I love that the villain is the principal. Like that's that's really fun. Yeah. Um, this feels like a show I would have been really into when I was like between eight and twelve. Yeah, but like I'm still really into this, honestly. Like it's again, um, it's probably my the favorite, my favorite current, like just one episode. It just immediately became my favorite Toku running right now. Mm -hmm. Such a such a great chemistry between all the cast too. Like with yeah. how um Red has to win over Blue in this episode, and there's a little bit where you suspect Blue might be the monster before he becomes a ranger. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah, just 
it, it gives me like I'm like actually like I'm sorry to keep comparing this. It, it's like a slight Forze vibes, like with the whole very mm. actually very much Forze vibes with like you know students becoming monsters and other students fighting them. Yeah, you know, with uh with Aka Ranger as Deadpool. Yeah, basically just coming in like much better Deadpool. <laughs> okay, that's a hot take, but like <laughs> just with some Grandpa Deadpool. Yeah, Grant gr- like sane Deadpool. I'll put it that way. Um, yeah, just coming in, just like from your imagination, just being like, uh, you, you say his imagination. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I think it's. Oh yeah, there's literally a scene where he's talking to Aka Ranger. The first scene Aka Ranger shows up in. He's like, you're just one of my delusions. And Aka yeah. Ranger's like, oh, right. And then Aka Ranger disappears. That, that's great. That's great. Uh, oh. I just I just got nothing else to say right now. Other than it's so good that the choreography is pretty decent. Like, it's not mind blowing, but it's just, yes, it's aesthetically great. It's very well written. I'll say the writing just got to me. It's just, man, mwah, love it. Yeah. Uh, if I were to have, like, one little nitpick with it, I'd say, like, some of the fight scenes are lit a little too dark. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, that's but other than that, like it's fine. Instagram, like, the, the entire show kind of has an Instagram camera filter to it, so. Mm hmm. Uh, but yeah, if you're not watching this show yet, which most people listening to this probably aren't because it's very not mainstream, uh, I would definitely recommend checking this out. Uh, fair warning, the episodes are 42 minutes a piece, so it's a it's a bit of a sit, but it's it's worth it. It's a good time. Um, yeah, and it's, and it's basically a bit... like two episodes stitched together, like two a two parter stitched together, like mm-hmm. but still flows naturally. And uh, if you want to find uh, subs for it, I'm sure it's up on the uh, streaming service site that we don't name on this podcast. But also, I downloaded it through a subgroup that was retweeted by at Toku Sub Releases. Yeah, t- most of the stuff we watch is through Toku Sub Releases, so please check their Twitter account out. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anything else you want to say about this first episode of High School Heroes? It's great, and I, lo- I love the announcing voice for like the app, like, Hi- the High School Heroes. Like. It- yeah, uh, but uh, why don't you go ahead and take us on the saber then? All right, Kamen Rider Saber, episode 45, the the, the one where the, they start to invade the villain's base. All right, so I just realized I can't, I have to explain this to Vac. Oh, God. Um, so this is like, so, um, well, I'll just get to like one of the bigger parts. I'll just go randomly through the episode. Just talk about what you want to talk about, man. Yeah, don't worry so... about cluing me in. All right, so the, one of the main writers is now, like, Caliber. Is, there's a new Caliber who is joining the heroes, and that's Sophia, one of the, like, the, like, the, the el- how do I describe it? Like, kind of the, the elder of the, like, Mentor group? lady? Mentor lady, yeah, mentor lady. Yeah, it's, I don't know why those words escape me. But, yeah, she became Caliber, and, yeah, they got some really good moments of her, like, interacting with the previous Caliber users, like, briefly, just... Man, the, the, the dynamics are just, like, the dynamic and emotion in this episode is just it nuts. And so apparently, is, real quick, is Caliber like a like a the B where it's just handed off from person to yes, person? Yes, basically. Like it starts off from it starts off of Danchi, the villain of the first arc, and then Kento gets it, uh, who's a Spada, and then he, uh, like as he gets his Spada back, and then like it go, and now it's on Sophia. Yeah, it's cool. It, yeah, it, it's a it's probably like I don't think we've gotten something like that like since like the B or Fies is. Uh, um, yeah. Well, uh. I'm trying to remember um, Kiksa. Kiksa was like that for a little bit until eventually Kusaka got it. Yeah, like that. I, that's what made my advice. Um, uh, else, what else? So yeah, um, there's a, a, of course really good action, really good emotion. Uh, we, you know, there, there's uh, I love like there's there's this fight scene with like Ren and Slash, which basically is Slash's final battle because he's kind of unconscious now and he might be dead. Oh, um, R.I.P. The X Aid Boy, uh, if you're wondering. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, and so like in like the jury, Ren's one of Ren's final attack. He uses Disast, who like the guy who had this character arc with the monster, and yeah. like like so he he like the, a Disast appears briefly, and they just do a, like a cool combo attack, and it's like but then his book fades away, so we're just using the last remains. It's just like oh the emotion. Uh oh man, it just like. And then, like, oh, the, the henshin sequence at the beginning, where they're, like, they all had all the writers' henshin, is just, uh... Yeah, I was seeing everybody share spring caps around, and I was like, as somebody who's not watching Saber, that's pretty fucking dope. Yeah, just all the books behind them, and they all go, like, henshin, that the split screen, and, uh, oh, man, it's... <laughs> I, I love it. Um, Storius gets some good moments of villainy, just being, like, all oh, despair and stuff. He has, he has a really creepy voice, which I like. 
he doesn't really get to do like much fighting in this episode, but you know, next episode he's about to do a lot of fighting. Um, yeah, next episode's like the the pr- like the semi-final episode because here here's the weird thing about Saber. It ends at forty seven, but there's gonna be one more episode like that's gonna be like a like basically a crossing the line between Revice and Saber. Um, so like like think of like a like a drive like episode forty seven or so episode forty eight. Where's it like you know one of those kind of stay where like there's a story finale and then there's like a like a finale finale okay so yeah. they're doing like uh what heisei used to do all the time where there would be like an episode that's like a, a crossover with one of the characters like yeah. how uh gem shows up and just wrecks everybody in the last episode of ghost i'm pretty sure you like that <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway uh yeah so saber yeah pretty good this i was i was gonna say it's the best episode this week but uh high school heroes came so <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, sounds like uh, good stuff. Yeah, that's all I got to say. We can move on to Kikai Sentai Zenkaiger, episode 22. The bullfighting... Br- 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 whatever Bruhaha. that was. Bruhaha. Moo down. So what did you think, Vac? Uh, I enjoyed this episode a lot. Uh, it was it's a very good, like, standard character focus episode, and one that we've been needing for quite a while because... Uh, as I kind of suggested with that meme I posted in your server today, we we finally resolved Gown being a racist. You mentioned that, like the the, the just like Gown being like a racist <laughs> against like his own kind. Yeah, um, like it's always been like a subtle thing, but they finally dealt with it in this episode and did it pretty well, I think. Yeah, and it wasn't like you know, I, I don't th- like. I mean, we kind of joke it. It's not. I don't think it's like that's what the writers meant to be. But like you know. <laughs> I also love how, like, they, they also have the other side of it, like, Juren gets mad at him, and he's like, oh, you only don't care about that, you don't care about that thing because it's a kikainoid. And then later on in the episode, Flint's like, no, that thing it does not have a very sophisticated AI, it was probably just stuck on something. And yeah, then Juren was... goes like, oh, I, I, I'm I sorry, I blew it out of proportion. <laughs> yeah. Like, Jur- Juren is Twitter in this. <laughs> Dang. Just like a little slight mistake, and it's like you're canceled. <laughs> mm-hmm. Dang. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, but it was a pretty funny episode. Uh, like the bull masks were pretty like cute. Uh, I love the part where like Two Kaiser comes in and he pulls the Ginga Man gear with like the bull, and he that just gets like so, everyone. To call- that was so wonderfully weird. Yeah, that was like that was pretty funny. Just like uh, calming down everyone, but then it just like ah, it rares off, and it's like. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm disappointed that even though Super Two Kaiser shows up, we don't get even an attempt at the dance. So yeah, that was annoying. That was that was. I, mean, I get it, like you know, yeah, I gotta keep a time with like the networks and all that, but still, uh, uh, like, it's a great dance. And uh, you know, uh, super hype that we're finally getting back to the Stacy subplot. We're yeah, finally, oh, we're like finally letting that boil over. The tease at the end is just. Uh, yeah, that new that new suit for the robo looks beautiful. Yeah, uh, to be fair, I don't I don't really see a difference. But then again, I, I'm not very good unless like you recolor something. It's yeah. a new head, and the arms are slightly skinnier. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's pretty hype. Of like, you know, we're gonna get so like like it's like the preview says the final like the the battle begins. So it's, this might be a multi part like adventure. So yeah, it also seems like it's leading up to either Stacy is gonna die or he's gonna start a redemption arc soon because he seems pretty freaking torn up and borderline remorseful towards the end of this episode. Yeah, like especially because he says like I, I'm not coming to your like sorry grandma I'm not coming to your place anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she gives him a card that says, you're always welcome here. Yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, um, yeah. Also, and the bird. Did you notice the face he made when he was looking at uh, the picture of Kaito's parents? What face? Like, I know he was, it, like, a bit weirded out. He was like, huh? It was like, it was like a, oh, I recognize these people face. Yeah. I, again, it's either Stacy is Kaito's brother or something else. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm assuming we're we're doing either brother or half brother. Um, yeah, or like he's half cyborg or something. Because especially because like I we saw the Stacey Caesar transformation again. We saw all those gears. So I'm like, he's half cyborg. <laughs> yeah, that could be a thing. Um, but no, overall I, I enjoyed this episode quite a bit. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's very much like a here's a calm episode before we go nuts in like the mid season finale because we're approaching halfway through the show. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize. That's uh oof, we've we've been for quite a lot with Saint Kaiser. That's uh oof, we've we've been for quite a lot with Saint Kaiser so far. Yeah, mostly good. Uh it really hasn't been a bad episode, just okay episodes. Yeah, there's been a couple dull ones, but uh overall nothing below a 6, I'd say. Yeah. Um so uh is there anything else we need to cover this week? Any any old stuff you watched that you want to talk about? I mean, I'm thinking if I do watch any old stuff, I watched the first two episodes of Zero One, but then I just decided to stop because of you know Shout Factory's gonna eventually release it in my lifetime. Um, Have you not finished Zero One? I did. I just rewatching the first two episodes because I want okay. to because I want to make it like a. Re- I was like the initial idea is well, I'm working on the Saber script because I'm I'm wanted to make a Saber analysis when the show ends. So I'm like I've been pre typing everything and like going back when new episodes come out and adding new stuff. And All right. I was gonna say because I was like, didn't we do a spoiler cast on that with database? No, yeah, I, I have been re- like it's like with build. I'm just mostly rewatching stuff. Okay. Um, and there are really good episodes. Like, the characterization, like initial characterization, is so good, and I'm like, I especially love like all the little subtle like d- details for like, oh man, just so yeah, like it's zero one's not my top in my top five, but it's it's really good. All right. Yeah. Well, um. Yeah, and I didn't have any time to watch anything old this week because, like I said, I've been super busy. But uh, I might, I might have stuff in or some figures to talk about next week potentially. I don't know. Uh, my what I'm reviewing this week is kind of up in the air at the moment, so we'll see. But uh, for okay, wait, right- I, I, I said I wasn't going to mention this, but sure, I'll mention this. I got a commentator Espada statue from GameStop. Yeah, you talked about that on uh, components. How, how yeah. are you liking that thing? Oh, it's it's a really nice statue. Like, it's not really movable. It's just mostly just here's a nice like replica of the suit, and it's a really good suit. And I just mm-hmm. it's been sitting on my desk. It's it's a very nice thing to look at. Uh, how love how big is that, the, and how much did it run you? It run me around twenty or so dollars uh, at GameStop. A mm-hmm. bit of shipping tax, but you know, um, because I, the, the weird thing is GameStop didn't have any in stock, but they had they could ship it to me. So I just said, oh sure, I'll ship. Okay. Um, and I'm just like, you know, I actually thought it was a Saber statue, but it was just a Kamen Rider Saber-esque statue. Like, Kamen Rider Saber, like, Espada from Saber, so. Okay. Um, but still, I, I like the character, so I decided to pick it up, and it's a nice suit. And it's a very, you know, it's a very nice figure. Yeah. Ooh. Would not mind owning, uh, like, a couple more, specifically Blades from Saber. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, if that's all we have to do for the podcast, I think I'm going to go ahead and... Uh... Close it up here. So, uh, everybody, be sure to check out our individual links, which are in the video description. Yeah. And uh, be sure to uh, join us back here next week when we'll be talking about uh, probably more High School Hero, more Zenkaidra, more Saber finale lead up, and, uh, you know, whatever. um, Hopefully, probably, maybe Lightning Collection figure 100. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it because I know even if it's good or bad, it's going to be bad. <laughs> it's going to be a bad reaction on Twitter. F- fingers crossed for, uh, like I said on Twitter last week, uh, my, my my money is on either Time Force Pink or Titanium. Yeah. Those would be, like, those wouldn't, well, Titanium I'd be a little excited over, but those wouldn't super pop me. It's more like, I think these would be the best overall reveals to get the fandom excited, but... Uh, yeah. Whatever. Uh, And uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this week in Tokusatsu. So uh, all you listeners, thank you. Don't forget to support us in all the ways we mentioned at the top of the show. And we will see you back here next week when we'll be discussing whatever happens that week in Tokusatsu.